welcome to Anthony's Outdoors, and in this episode, I'm answering all of your questions. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I had asked for people to comment on a video that I had posted, and uh, I actually also put up a poll on the channel in the community tab to uh, ask questions of Anthony's Outdoors, either for myself or for uh, Courtney, and uh, we would do our best to answer as many as questions as we got, and we got quite a few. Um, I kind of went through and cherry-picked some of them. Some of them were completely inappropriate. Some of them uh, are really good questions, and others, um, if they actually just watched the channel, they'd be able to answer them for themselves. Um, a lot of people that I could tell were commenting were not... Um, they were not followers of the channel, and they probably haven't watched a single video, and they were just trying to be um, smart asses. So, <clears throat> with that being said, I'm going to go through the uh, questions that I have here on my phone, and uh, I'll just keep firing away. All right, our first question comes from Ren S. How do you keep your batteries charged on long trips? <clears throat> so if you guys have been watching the channel, you know that me and Courtney take a lot of uh, multi-night trips up north, and uh, we typically camp, and there's nowhere to charge your boat batteries when you're camping. And we don't have a generator. Also, in a lot of the places we go, generators are not allowed. So, it's an excellent question. How do we keep our batteries charged? We don't. Um, basically, the way it's rigged up right now, the boat has four batteries. Two of which are completely dedicated to the trolling motor, which we use heavily as primarily musky fishermen. Um, we're constantly using that trolling motor, getting in and out of tight areas, uh, going down shorelines, down... Uh, brakes, structure, all that kind of stuff. So we use our trolling motor a lot. Luckily, the Tarova that we have is pretty efficient and I can run that bad boy um, about four and a half days before I need to start worrying about us running out of juice. The other two batteries in the boat control everything else. The bilge, the lights, the uh, ignition for the main motor, the fish finder, and those two batteries handle all that, and uh, those I've never had any issue with whatsoever. So the short answer is we don't keep them charged when we go on our island camping trips. Um, we just have learned to use the trolling motor uh, judiciously and not burn it up on our first two days out, knowing that we're going to be out there for four or five days at a time. All right, next question came to us from Eric A., and uh, it was, what tent do you guys use? Um, over the years, we've kind of upgraded our tents. And basically, since we've been filming Anthony's Outdoors, we have been using the Cabela's Westwind tent. It is an eight-person. Um, we are looking to upgrade to uh, the next size up from what we're at right now. Um, so as we've kind of progressed with our island camping expeditions and stuff like that, we've learned that... Um, we just can't seem to leave stuff at home and we just keep bringing more stuff and uh, more cots and more blankets and, and more sleeping pillows and stuff like that. So we've, uh, we've just been expanding and um, I'd like to kind of rein that in a little bit, but it is what it is. So the Cabela's Westwind tent, it's, it served us great. Um, we have had no issues with it whatsoever and we have been in some serious, serious storms with that thing. Um, storms that most people should never have to camp in. Um, just go to the truck, go home, go somewhere safe. And we stuck it out and it's been fine. So the floor is a little thin. Uh, if I had any complaints, the floor is a little thin. So if you don't have a very clean area to lay that tent out, um, you can risk puncturing the bottom of it. Um, obviously, a lot of people bring an extra tarp to lay down. We don't. Um, again, we just bring so much stuff. We're just going to come back to another question here in a minute. But uh, yeah, the tent's great. Uh, the only other complaint I have is in the summer, it is hot in that tent. It has very bad airflow um, for a summer tent if you leave the fly on. If you're expecting rain in the middle of summer and you leave that fly on, it's going to be really hot in that tent. And that's just, that's one of the, uh, the biggest drawbacks of that tent. But all the other seasons of the year, that tent is phenomenal. We've used it in 20 degree weather and we've used it in 90 degree weather and it's held up and uh, we just, we really love it. Our next two questions come from Keith DK. First one is, 
Seeing what gear you take to the island camping would be neat, especially when factoring how much you can safely load in the boat. What gear do you no longer bring that once seemed necessary? Excellent question. Um, so let's start out by saying we don't usually show us bringing stuff to and from the island from the boat launch. Um, when we go on these trips, we want to get to the island as quickly as possible or find one that's vacant, set up camp, and then start filming and get out fishing and doing our thing. Um, the time that it takes to even set up the camera like I have here, um, it, it could take 10-15 minutes just to get the lighting right, to get everything set up the way you want it. So we try to leave out a lot of the fluff and I don't know if a lot of viewers want to see that kind of stuff. Um, so we just leave that stuff out of us landing on the island, offloading the boat, setting up all the tents and our sleeping equipment, our cooking area, all that kind of stuff we just cut out. But we do bring a lot of stuff and it seems like over the years we've brought more and more things with us every year as opposed to the opposite where usually you start off bringing a ton of stuff and then as you progress and, and become more familiar with what you're doing, you bring less and less. The first couple times we went out, we brought fishing gear, a cooler, and freeze-dried meals. And we realized that um, we're not out hiking long distances. We're not um, worried about water uh, conservation while we're out there. We're surrounded by water. Um, so let's bring actual food. Let's bring actual food we can cook. Steaks, chicken, sausages, stuff like that. And, uh, and just enjoy yourself. Enjoy your meals because we're... Courtney is a fairly uh, picky eater and trying to find something that would satisfy her needs in the froze or the freeze dried food department really hard, really hard. In all the years we've been doing this, I think she may have found one or two that she tolerates. The rest are just total garbage to her. So, and even me, like I'll eat just about anything and it's kind of not that great. So we decided Let's start bringing more food. With more food comes more utensils and cooking equipment and, and stuff like that. So um, really we've actually ended up bringing more stuff than we used to. So that's kind of a downside of it, but at the same time we also go out there and we just enjoy the whole camping atmosphere. Um, I know it seems like a lot of these episodes are specifically geared towards fishing, but I think we would just enjoy going to an island and hanging out and letting Hunter have the time of his life, you know, off leash doing his thing. So, um, a lot of times we make two trips to answer your question about load capacity for the boat. So I have a 16 and a half foot boat, uh, the load capacity with people's like, it's only like 850 or 900 pounds. So you factor in two outer box coolers loaded with, uh, drinks and ice and food and you're talking you're pushing it already. So, we usually make two trips um, going to the island. We grab our tent and our fishing gear and maybe uh, cots and a cooler. And then we will make our first journey out to go find an island. Um, and then we, we post up and we put that tent up and we get some of our stuff situated. Then we go back to the truck, grab the rest of our gear and then go back to the island. So sometimes it's a, it's a two it's a two part trip, uh, especially if we're bringing firewood and all that kind of stuff. You got to make two trips with my boat. It's unfortunate, but maybe someday uh, I'll be able to upgrade my boat, and uh, that won't be an issue anymore. Our second question from Keith DK is: Do you pike fish on any of the Lake Michigan tributaries? The answer to that is no. Um, it's not that we don't want to, we just haven't really ventured that way towards Lake Michigan. Um, it's on my bucket list to go to Green Bay and fish uh, all the tributaries of Green Bay for pike and muskie. Um, we just haven't gotten there yet. Uh, the last couple years with uh, my health and us moving and jobs and all that kind of stuff has really put a damper on a lot of the trips we had planned. Um, so we just haven't gotten to it yet. That doesn't mean... Uh, we are, you know, soon, but I would definitely like to fish some of the, the Green Bay and Lake Michigan tributaries for pike and muskie um, in the coming future here. So 
Um, it's on my bucket list. Hopefully we'll get to it here in the next few years. Here's a timely question from Carol L. What two baits would you throw in October? Excellent question. It was on a musky video, so I'm going to assume she was asking about musky lures specifically. So my two choices uh, for October are going to be a swimming dog, the regular size musky innovations swimming dog. And I'm going to flash up a little image here of uh, what that looks like. And then I would also throw the downsized um, bulldog, black and green, my favorite color. Um, those are the two I would throw in October. Reason being, the swimming dog, you can fish fast, slow, you can jig it, you can rip it, you can do pretty much everything you want with it, um, except for getting down deep and fishing brake lines. Uh, it doesn't sink very well, um, and when you start to retrieve it because of that tail, it starts to kind of wobble up on you. So that's where I would use the bulldog to fish the deeper brake lines and stuff like that. Um, so depending on water temperatures, like this October, it was really warm. Guys were still throwing bucktails uh, mid, midway into October up in northern Wisconsin. I'm sorry, I missed it again this year. But um, yeah, so super warm water. So that swimming dog or a bucktail would do perfect uh, in warmer water temperatures, like say 58, 60 degrees and above. Um, once that water temperature drops below 60 degrees, I'm going to start throwing that bulldog on those brake lines and I'm probably going to be soaking a sucker off the side of the boat. Those are the two baits that I would use in conjunction with sucker fishing if the water temperatures allow. All right, our next question comes to us from Rennie. He's an awesome photographer, by the way. What is your favorite lure for pike fishing? Easy. Meps number five. A Meps number five, I don't care what flavor you have it in, whether it be a, a, a nickel blade, copper blade, a fluorescent blade, doesn't matter. And uh, typically a brighter skirt. Um, my favorite all-time pike bait. Um, I don't care where you throw it, how you throw it, when you throw it, you're probably going to catch pike on it. It's just an awesome all-around lure. Uh, when we go on our annual pike -thons, we use it as our, 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 it's basically our measuring stick. That lure sets the tone for what other lures we might throw later on uh, if that MEPS isn't working or if the fish are doing something a little differently. Like if we're having to jig that MEPS back to the bait, back to the boat, then we know we need to change up our presentation. If we're burning it and they're just hunting and chasing it down, we know they want fast action lures and we can stick with that. So it's really our, our, our measuring stick when we go on our pike in the early spring and it's just a fantastic bait. If I had to pick one other um, pike bait, it would probably be a daredevil. Three quarter ounce, five of diamonds. I don't know why, I can't explain it. They just catch fish and they catch really good pike, really nice sized pike. Um, and I've caught muskies on them too. So I have a little bit of uh, a bias towards them there. But yeah, uh, Daredevil Spoon, not the off brands, actual Daredevil brand, much better quality lure, better hooks, better hardware, better action than those other store name knockoffs so just keep that in mind but yeah maps number five and then your uh daredevil spoon three quarter ounce all right our next question is for courtney and uh she's not here right now to answer this question but we did do a little filming before so we'll cut away to that and the question is from rockfish did your wife like fishing before you met here's courtney Honestly, I don't really remember when I was a little kid. My parents took me a few times and they said I had a good time, but um, honestly, I hadn't gone fishing in probably the last 20 years. Um, ironically, on Halloween night, the year before Anthony and I met, um, I had actually posted on Facebook asking if someone would please take me fishing. And it wasn't until maybe six months after Anthony and I started dating that we went on our first fishing trip. 
What was our first trip? Well, our first local trip was to a small pond and I caught this small little carp and I freaked out. Anthony wanted me to hold it and I, I just didn't want to do it. It was slimy and gross and I almost started crying, but we were newly dating. So I was like, okay, okay, I'll do it. And then I was holding it and there was blood. And the rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> All right, one of these questions uh, is a question I get numerous times from numerous people. And then one of these questions is from Ed. Uh, we'll start with that one. So the question is, are you sponsored? No. This channel has never been sponsored by any company anywhere. Um, I'm not opposed to sponsorships, um, but I also like what I like and we use what we use because it works for us. Um, I'm not really a fan of people that just hawk a particular brand because that's what they get sent to them and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll talk about this. So I'll have a really hard time. If anybody does approach me, it's gotta be a company that I've used before. It's gotta be something that I truly believe in in order for me to accept a sponsorship. That's just the way I roll. Um, I have no problem with anybody else that has sponsors that does whatever they do. That's their own financial decision and I'm never gonna tell anybody what to do with their money. So uh, I'd appreciate it if others didn't do that for us and our channel. Um, but yeah, no, we're not sponsored by anybody. Um, there are a couple companies that I would absolutely love uh, for them to, you know, throw us some baits or some rods or reels or, or whatever it might be. Um, and I would be 100% behind them because I already use their products and I know that they're awesome. Um, but as of right now, no, we are not sponsored. Um, and uh, going forward, who knows what might happen. But just know that in this time, this moment right now, that if you see us sponsored by a company on this channel, it's because we've used it before and we know it works and we're proud to be a sponsor, if that ever does happen. And our final question that I get uh, frequently, and I've heard this on YouTube, family gatherings, friends, work, I've heard it all over, is have you ever considered guiding? And the answer has always been the same, absolutely. However, and here it comes, financially, geographically, and just where I'm at in life right now, that is not a possibility. As much as I would absolutely love to be a fishing guide and do my favorite pastime as a profession, um, I just, it's just not in the cards right now. So yes, absolutely, I've thought about it. And as of right now, it's just not in the cards. And I have a lot of um, feelings on the subject and a lot of uh, probably controversial theories on guiding and all that kind of stuff. And I'll save that for another day, another video. But just know that right now, yes, absolutely, I've thought about guiding and it's just not in the cards in my life at this time. And with that, that's the end of this video. It's been a long one and I apologize. Some of you have probably already clicked off and that's fine. Um, you know, as long as you watch some of it, that's better than nothing, right? So if you guys have any follow-up questions to some of the stuff that I answered today or just new questions that weren't answered at all, comment down below and uh, let me hear what you have to say. Um, make sure you hit that like button and also please, please, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, every subscription helps and uh, it gives us a reason to keep on doing what we're doing here at uh, Anthony's Outdoors. So with that, I just wanna say thank you everybody for uh, sending in your questions and thanks for watching.